the bit 16 you've never seen a review like this weird old games you cannot tame this world that you miss snesman is the champion he is 16 bit snesman is the champion he is 16 bit hello my name's snesman today we're going to talk about super godzilla now this is a game I already reviewed four years ago, but let's be honest, I was not a very good reviewer back then, and it's time for some new judgment. Let's check out Super Godzilla. The epicness is beyond description. Slowly the camera moves up until we see the face of Godzilla himself. Let's cause some havoc and get down to gaming. The Godzilla movies always had ridiculous plots, but the story in this game is kind of interesting. A group of humans captured Godzilla and it's your job to control him electronically. So what are we waiting for? Let's control Godzilla and stomp Tokyo! Here's our first level and it's not Tokyo, but we'll make do. The first half of every level is played out in an overworld where you play as Godzilla menacingly marching through the streets. The first thing you'll probably notice is that Godzilla moves at a snail's pace, I'm not kidding. Especially if you're going through water, he moves really slow. And while you're plodding around, the military tries to kill you. There's all these tanks in the way, I say crush them. A weird thing about this game is that if you run into buildings and crush them down, it'll hurt you and lower your score. That's ridiculous. Telling Godzilla to stop breaking down buildings is like telling me to stop complaining about old video games. It doesn't make any sense. So why are you trying to control his inner nature and make him tiptoe around buildings instead of crushing them? Oh well, the storyline makes you play as a wimpy Godzilla, I guess. Luckily, Godzilla doesn't act like a sissy for the rest of the game. You can fight some monsters. That's King Ghidorah, the Godzilla fever is coming back! Now, how do I play? Fighting spirit, um, move in, um, Godzilla. Stop, for the love of sanity, stop! What the heck are you talking about? This game has the most alarmingly weird battle system you'll ever come across. It's based on this thing they call the Fighting Spirit, which decides how powerful a monster's move is. The goal is to punch your enemy and then move backwards or forwards to build up Fighting Spirit. Then a slot machine-like window will appear for you to choose a move. All the attacks are shown as detailed anime cutscenes. Here's Godzilla's signature fire belching attack. Ow! Needless to say, this is a weird fighting system, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to. But once you do, it's not as bizarre as it seems. It kind of works like a turn-based RPG battle system, but with some action thrown in. And you gotta give this game credit, it took guts to do something this weird. First time players of this game will probably be freaked out by this. But I actually kind of like this RPG system. Off with his head. And now as a celebration for winning the first level, you get sneezed on by Godzilla. Ew. After this you have a short cutscene that explains that UFOs were behind the attack. And aliens are invading Earth. That's the plotline in a nutshell. Well, not just a nutshell, that's the whole plot. So let's move on. Here's the second level, for instance. It's really similar to the overworld of the first. Just watch out for mines and tanks and keep marching around until... Wait, what's this? Oh no, it's the UFOs! I hate these things! No! Sure, they might not seem like such a big nuisance. Just hit them once with fire and kill them. But they won't leave you alone. The only way to stop these things from randomly appearing is by taking down the alien mothership. And this mini-boss is hard to track down, and once you fight it, well, it's irritating. Oh look, it's flown up here and I can't get to it. Just keep crashing into it. Oh well, I'm gonna leave, we're gonna go backwards. Oh, now it comes down! I hate these little aliens, but I usually put up with them every level and don't track down the mothership. So all those UFOs are really irritating, but... 
What about the levels themselves? How good are they? Well, call me insane, but I actually think the levels have a certain charm to them. Each one has an interesting atmosphere. True, they feel kind of constrained and your movement is ridiculously slow, but I think it's still kind of fun to play the overworld sections. They have a kind of relaxed pace and you can pick up some interesting power-ups that help during battle. Most of them just heal your health or give you stronger attack, but then there's of course, the Time Stopper. The most glorious item in the game that lets you slow down your time limit so you can have a leisurely stroll. Psst, that was sarcasm. It's useless. But honestly, what do you guys care about items in overland travel? Let's talk about the monster battles. This is a stronger aspect of the game. True, the battle system is clunky and sometimes frustrating, but it's also really satisfying to attack your enemies with those cool cutscenes. And there's a degree of strategy to it. Each boss has different weaknesses that you have to exploit. For instance, Badra the Flying Moth can only be hurt by super powerful fire. The water monster Biolante is resistant to your headbutts, and Mechagodzilla has a force field that can block fire. Another thing that really shines in this game is the graphics. Yeah sure, complain to me that things don't always move fluidly, but look at some of these sprites, they're so well detailed and big. And what about the backgrounds, which all have really rich Japanese settings? This is a really interesting artistic style that you never see nowadays. I don't know why, but it really interests me. The music's also pretty good. The MIDI orchestra sounds dated, but the songs themselves have the same musical power that the original movie did. So the music's good, but I have one more ace in the whole good thing about this game. Super Godzilla. Super Godzilla is an ultimate form of Godzilla that you get to play as for the last two levels of this game. No more wimpy Godzilla now. Super Godzilla can make even a tail whip look awesome. Playing as Super Godzilla is awesome but brief. You only get to play as him on level 5 and for the end boss on level 6. The end boss of this short little game is called Bagan and he is a challenge to beat. But since you're playing as Super Godzilla who's fun to play as, it's a pretty thrilling finale. But like I said, I just wish they gave you more time to play as Super Godzilla. Things to make it better. A much faster movement speed in overland travel. A more simplified battle system. Get rid of cheap boss attacks like Mechagodzilla's teleport. More levels, especially more with Super Godzilla. And last, a two player mode would be nice. Super Godzilla is definitely a really flawed game and I can see why you wouldn't like it, but for me it holds a special place. On a scale of 1 to 10, Super Godzilla scores a 6 out of 10, above average. So that's Super Godzilla, a really ambitious game that does have some major flaws, but I'd still call it a decent experience. But, I bet you didn't know there's a more straightforward Godzilla release in the Super Nintendo era. It was a Japanese release only, and it's a Godzilla tournament fighter. I wish they had released this game in Europe and America, because the only way I can play it is through an emulator. For fans of Godzilla like myself, this is a really cool game because you get to play as all your favorite characters. It's a really flashy game with much better graphics and presentation than Super Godzilla, but the action is a lot more straightforward. It's essentially Street Fighter with giant Japanese monsters. I know most people would argue that this is a better game than Super Godzilla, and I realize it technically is, but I just like Super Godzilla for being so much more ambitious. Most people probably won't follow this train of thought, but that's my review of Super Godzilla. Well thanks for watching, this has been SNESman Reviews, and I'll talk to you again sometime soon.